through a quick review of your owner's manual, you'll find that you're going to need these 104 capacitors because they don't ever uh, provide those. But you got everything else you need. You got your axles, your uh, springs, frame, and your tires. Uh, pretty cool. These are squishy tires. That was pretty good. I didn't think they were going to be so soft, but yeah, pretty good. And they also fit the axles on the WPL trucks because it's the exact same setup, basically. So, Except for longer axles. Next thing you're gonna do is get the provided screws, and I recommend you put in a magnetized bolt like this, so that you can keep all your screws in order and you won't lose them. So yeah, review your your step one. Put the frame together. You're gonna be using the number one screw. So it's pretty simple. Everything's uh, provided in the instructions. Just don't over tighten it. As soon as it stops, just stop. Yeah, tightening. Then yeah, everything is lined up. They got those uh, pretty set up, pretty good. Where you you won't mess up uh, the alignment of that motor skid plate. So there's your uh, your fittings for your shocks right there. So you just put it together. Pretty simple. Use the number one screw on this part, and on the instruction manual. The black stuff is the assembly part, and the the blue is the already assembled stuff. So yeah, here's those one capacitors. I'm gonna put these on the motors real fast for this next step to put the motor transmission into the chassis. Just put these capacitors in them little holes right there, and just set it right about there. Get something to clamp down your your motor so you can solder it and then you can clip those off after your here's the, the the two different styles that they got here the for the bottom sprint uh, link and then the top link the top link is the short one the bottom link is the long one so let's start with the the bottom one first and this is all number one screw first so yeah, just like I said, don't tighten it too much. As soon as it stops, that's good enough. All right, so I got them all on the bottom there now. I'm gonna do the top. It's just the same thing there. You want you don't want to get it too tight. You want to go back a half a turn after you, they snugged up. Once they snug up, go back a half a turn. That way you can get better flex. So get your number one screw in there and tighten it up and then go back a half a turn. Alrighty, we got that bottom part going. Now we're gonna put the motor transfer case in there transmission box there and it looks like uh it's the one to go in because it's got the tabs in there gotta pull them tabs out here let me show you you can't see at that position right there see these little tabs right here that's the if you're not going to use this bigger motor usually they come with the 130 motor but since this is the 180 motor you pull those tabs off and now your motor fits pretty cool so use the number one screw on this setup. That's gonna be our number one screw that we're gonna be using the most, that's funny. Okay. It's a little tighter fit area than the WPL's little skid plate box there. So here's the instructions for the step two, putting the axles together. Okay, make sure your, uh, your plastic bushings there are in place of uh, where they need to be sitting so just like see how it is there like and this one's pretty cool because it got these cool little clamps i bought some beefed up ones for my uh red cat mod that i did on my wpl and it has bolts on it but yeah this one has a little snap setup system there so here grease up your your axle not too much though i'm not going to put a lot because i want the axles to break in because when they're brand new, these plastic ones and even the metal ones, they're not very smooth. And if you don't put too much uh, oil in there, they'll break in faster. So I'll probably like run it like five or six times. And then I'll take it apart 
and uh, put some good waterproofing grease in there and then it, it should run really smooth then but for now they're gonna they're not a super smooth because it's got manufactured didn't get everything milled out correctly or whatever so it, that's what there's a break-in procedure and that's my break-in procedure is to grease them lightly run them five or six times that's like a 30 minute run each time and then uh, take them apart and grease them up with some good grease all right we're going to be using the number three screw to put these diff covers together and on these diff covers you don't want to tighten them up all the way but just like as soon as they stop that's good so i've been using this paint to add a little more realisticness so just a couple of dabs right here and it adds the effect of uh some uh, nuts for the diff cover here Now there you go, those diff covers look pretty realistic and they look sweet. And these are the parts I forgot to put them in first, but it's pretty simple to snap them in there, open them up and pop them in. And then we'll be using the number two screw to screw that axle bridge together. So just pop them in there. Next we're going to add the steering link. Later I'll get some metal steering links, but for right now I'm going to put this kit together with everything that it comes with. Other than, you know, it don't come with the ESC, receiver, transmitter, stuff like that. You know, the batteries, all that good stuff. But yeah, like I said, everything needs to be tightened up. But then if it's a moving, moving part, make sure you back it off a little bit because it's a moving part. But if it's not a moving part, just as soon as it stops, that's good enough. All right, we're gonna be using a number two screw for the connecting rod link mounts for your link. So just don't tie them up all the way. It's just as soon as it stops, like I said, that's good enough. So let's get the, the next axle bridge bolted down together here with this connecting rod rest for the links here. All right, you can see everything that's blue. That's the already assembled stuff. The black stuff is the new stuff that needs to be assembled. So we're gonna assemble the axles to the chassis now by connecting these links using the number one screw. Next we'll be installing the coil spring shock assembly to the chassis using on this part right here this is the number four screw on the top part of the shock assembly and the bottom part we'll be using the number one screw and on these ones we're going to back them off a half a turn so we can have the maximum flex on this chassis loose is good Here's the battery tray. I'm gonna install it right now, even though I don't have electronics yet for this truck, but I'm gonna go ahead and build this truck all the way up. When I get my electronics, I'll put them back together. That was the number five screw that they called for. So we're gonna put this shell together now by putting the hood on there. Once you snap it in place right there, you need to get your window next. And with those little slotted spots right there is where your window's gonna sit in place so that we can put this little black plate that holds everything down. Now we're gonna do our lights. Probably be a good idea to paint those silver, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put this truck together and there's the light covers and there's your grill. Now she's starting to look like a new D90. There's the interior and there's uh, those are the spots where you put the number two screw 
for your floor and your interior spot. Here's our hard top. Looks like it snaps in on the top and then it screws down on the bottom here. Once you get it popped in there, flip your truck upside down and screw that on. Here's our cargo rack and it just pops in via friction. And then here's how you bolt down your shell to your chassis in these four spots. Actually four in the front and two in the back. And then your truck's put together. Now that's nice, that's pretty cool, check it out. It's got lots of flex. Looking pretty good, pretty squishy. Can't wait to put the electronics in there and take it for a run, see what this stock 180 motor does with this truck. Well, there you have it guys. Stay tuned for the part two modification video where I'll put the electronics in there.